Counting is one of the most important skills that your child will learn as he or she goes in their math journey. Now, we usually think of counting when we think of just saying numbers, one, two, three, four. But in fact, there's actually several different ways to count, and I'm going to talk about each different way that you can and what we focus here on kindergarten. So the first type of counting, very basic, is row counting. And this is whenever you say the numbers in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I usually like to use the example of a very young child just repeating these numbers. A young child usually doesn't understand that there is value behind the numbers. They're just learning how to say it in order. So that's the first way that a child learns to count. The second type of counting is called one-to-one -one correspondence, and that's when your child realizes that one number goes with one object when they're counting. So for example, I have these bear bears here, and if you touch each one as you go, I go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I know that each time I touch a bear, I say a number. This leads into what we call counting sets. After your child learns one-to-one -one correspondence, they will learn the last number that they say names the quantity of the set. So one, two, three, four, five. There are five bears here. And no matter which way I rearrange the bears, I still have five, even if I don't take any away. Another type of counting is called cardinality. And this is what has to do with order, like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and just kind of naming the position of where objects fall. Another type of rote counting that once your child masters counting forward, we would want them to learn how to count backwards. Counting backwards sets the foundation for subtraction. So if they learn how to count backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, rotely, they can go ahead and we can move on to the next step, which is counting back or counting on to figure out to solve a problem. So let me show you how we would count on or count back to figure out a problem. Now, so I have my three bears right here and I have two, okay? I can see that I have three bears. How many more do I need if I add them here? So what I can do is, I know this is three. I don't have to go back and start counting over again. I see this is three, four, five. So it means starting with the number and counting on. Or if I had five lollipops and my dad gave me two more, I can start with five, six, seven. Five and seven, I mean five and two make seven. Counting backwards would be like that except going backwards. If Paul gave his mom seven cookies and she ate three, how many cookies does she have left? So she had seven cookies. If I count backwards, three spaces, three numbers, I can figure out how much. Seven, six, five, four. She had four cookies. Another type of counting is subitizing, and as, we, as adults, we do this all the time without even realizing what subitizing is. If I show you this card right here, and hopefully you can see it, you don't need to touch each dot to know that there's five there. You can instantly recognize that quantity without having to count. That's what subitizing is. If you want to learn more about subitizing, we have a video um, specifically on subitizing. The last type of counting I'm going to talk about today is skip counting. In kindergarten, we can count by twos, fives, tens, ones, and or really you can count by any multiple of numbers. If, you, if your child learned how to skip count, this really sets the precedent for multiplication. And if you want to see how you can help your child count at home, you can see our video on using the number line or using the hundreds chart because those are fantastic tools to learn to count on. Um, and as always, you can ask your friendly kindergarten teacher for more tips on helping your child count. Thank you so much for tuning in to help your child at home.